What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Today, I kind of go into detail about my own business, talking about culture, growth, and uh, managing workload on my team. So if you're interested in checking out what I do on a daily basis and some of the things going on in my own painting business, uh, you're going to love this episode. So check it out. And it starts right now. Contractors all over the world are wanting more, more time, more freedom, more impact. The way we do this is through implementing systems, processes, standards. Welcome to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Here we hit business strategy, coaching, mindset, motivation, the tools you need for success. So strap in, listen up, and get ready to grow on the Contractor Secrets Podcast. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Wow, it has been a crazy sequence of weeks for me, not only personally, just in business and, you know, getting back to it, getting back in the saddle. You know, I think, uh, you know, life has its ups and downs. One of my favorite sayings is getting back to center um, and how quickly I can do that. Um, Business. Wow. Three crews for me. Uh, If you follow along with uh, the pod, Uh, I think one of the last episodes I was talking about how uh, we were just getting that started and now I love it. Now I'm in a position where I see it now because I'm, I'm in it. I'm um, attracting the jobs that I need to, uh, to sustain this business model. Um, And, and it's, and it's actually working really, really well. Um, Now that I'm in it to where, uh, you know, three crews are always moving. I never want to go back, (laughs) you know? So that's kind of what happens, I guess, when, uh, when you hit a new level and you start to see not only it's of course the income is is a little bit more which uh is is a piece of of the whole but it's just the the system is functioning so much smoother in terms of our ability to uh to get things done and to move parts around like you know one thing some people might think is like oh well if you have three crews uh or if you have three units producing a result then you have to always have three jobs. And that's not true. Like what I've done is maybe that third crew, you know, had one job for the week or one and a half jobs. Uh, and I put them uh, with the other crews for uh, the remainder of the week to kind of help them out. So it's like just just the resources is is what's awesome, you know, and, and it's been really efficient. So, you know, what I wanted to jump on today and talk about uh, was about culture and and about uh and instilling uh instilling good habits into into the right leaders in your business because you know without good people running these crews really good people they wouldn't be ran properly um you know again one thing i'll always say is that i created these managers um they weren't managers i didn't seek out managers um i sought out great people with the potential to be managers and when the opportunity came up you know, it was an easy transition to make them a manager. And I think if you can do that, um, you have the secret sauce. If you can take someone who was not at one point in a management position and create a management position and teach them how to, how to manage, um, then you have, uh, again, you have the secret weapon in, in terms of how to grow a business. Um, so what I want to talk to you about is a scenario, actually, you know, we had a, uh, we had a really interesting week. You know, those of you who have heard about the hurricane, um, Ian, <laughs> and that was, uh, that was a monster, but thank God, uh, it, it didn't impact us here, but it, but what it did, it was, it did impact our work schedule. We planned as if, you know, this thing was going to hit and we got some, some wind and some rain, and, you know, it was all part of it, but we did, uh, we did plan around that so we missed two days of work and that was the first time for me missing two days of work with three crews which is like whoa that was that was a blast because instead of having to only worry about moving two jobs uh it was three and of course we had someone that was planning on moving in and you know it it was just kind of messy so what's interesting is is that typically i don't take jobs that are really far out of my uh service area and you know some way or another, this job fell through the cracks and came to us. And, uh, you know, I kind of took it because I priced it favorably as if worst case scenario, they did take it and they gave it to us. <laughs> then we would at least be OK because the price was there um, and go figure. They took it. So we took the job and it's just like 
astronomically far in comparison to what we normally do. And if there was ever a job to not be far, it would probably have, like, if there was ever a time to not have a job far, the time was now during this hurricane because, of course, like, everything was all over the place. And, you know, on average, it was a 50 to an hour, 50 minute to an hour drive for the guys. So, you know, the stress was high because this was the job that was moving in. Um, and I liked the guy, the guy who hired us, like, was like, you know, I want you guys to do it. And I was like, all right, you know, we'll do it. So not too upset that I took it. It was just inconvenient during this time with the hurricane. And, you know, so it was a little bit of a stressful situation because, you know, we started on Monday. We worked Tuesday. I gave the team off Wednesday because, you know, it was like a prep day for the hurricane. Thursday was when the hurricane was really supposed to whack us. Uh, it didn't, but they had Wednesday and Thursday off. Um, and I want to kind of channel back, you know, because Thursday morning I woke up and this hurricane didn't hit. And uh, and it was almost like Wednesday wasn't even really bad. So on Thursday morning, I texted the team and I said, hey, you know, listen, guys, this hurricane didn't hit as bad as we thought. I kind of want us to work today. Um, so I expect everyone, you know, gather yourselves, you know, let's come in a little bit later. Let's come in at 11 o'clock today. And, uh, you know, I want everyone to work. And part of me did that because the pressure of the three crews and like knowing how far back we'd be absolutely nothing related to money. Like that was the last thing on my mind. It was more so keeping promises. That's what drives me in business is making sure promises are kept. And I get it. People would understand it's Hurricane Ian, but the promises down the line, uh, you know, again, two days off of our schedule is a lot. Um, and still me being kind of new to this three crew thing, just trying to coordinate, you know, all this is like incredibly uh, challenging, especially again, when you're not prepared for that. It just came out of nowhere. Hey, we're off for two days this week out of nowhere. Um, so immediately I kind of got a little panicky on Thursday. I'm like, all right, guys, we need to work. Um, gather yourselves. I, I started calling everyone at like uh, 8 30, 9 o'clock in the morning, and like half of them answered. The other half were just like, well, I mean, you know, it's still like a hurricane warning outside. It's still windy. And part of me was like, well, come on, we, we got to do this. Like, I gave you guys off yesterday. I know that, like, I told you you were off today, and I want you guys to work. And I had a couple people buy into that. They were like, all right, yeah, let me get ready. Um, and part of me just was like, is this right? You know, like, I mean, I told them they were off. Like, I know in this business, like mindset is important in terms of like, all right, gearing up the night before of what they need to do for that day. And then calling them in the morning. Some of them were still sleeping. Um, and me as a leader, you know, I'm over here trying to get everybody riled up. This is a, this is 10 people. I have to get riled up to get to work. Um, you know, and then I started getting a text message, like one, one person, Hey, I, I actually have baby duty today. My wife had to go in for an emergency shift at the hospital and all these things started coming. And part of me was like, did I make the right choice here? You know, like, am I, am I making the right choice? What am I putting? What am I putting first? You know, um, I, I told them they'd have the day off. It's still a little weary outside. It's a little windy you know, did I make the right choice? And, you know, one of my head managers was like, you know, Hey, you know, there's still a hurricane warning outside. Like, I know you want to, I know you want to get the jobs done, you know, and a part of me also wanted to make sure everybody got a full week of work. That's also very important to me, you know? So it was a mixture between the two. And, uh, I had to, I had to come to grips with that. I had to say, Hey, you know what? At the end of the day, you know, maybe that was not the right call. So I went back on that and, and I said, hey, you know what, everyone, just forget it. You know, we'll we'll figure it out. Everyone just stay home. Sorry for the, you know, the abrupt, uh, you know, the abrupt notice. Just stay home. Enjoy the time with your families. We'll figure it out. You know, I would like to at least ask everyone, hey, if you could, could you please work on Sunday or Saturday for me? Um, and, um, you know, I don't ask a lot, just like we're really behind and and a majority of them actually responded in the group chat and said, yeah, absolutely. I'll help, whatever. So that was cool, you know, and it's like, you know, but but I want to kind of dissect that for a second, because me as a leader, you know, guys, we hold a lot of power, you know, and 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 you got to be careful with the demand that you put on uh, your team members, you know, in, in terms of, 
you know, doing things that are out of the norm, uncomfortable. Like that was just an out of the norm, uncomfortable situation that some people would have to like, you know, most people would have just had to do it because I'm their boss and they don't want to lose their job. They don't want to create friction. You know, they're going to do what I say. And, uh, you know, I had to really like reflect there for a second. I'm like, you know, this is, this isn't giving me a good feeling, like making these people work on a day. I told them they were off with like, you know, stuff going on outside. Everything's closed. You can't find gas. It just wasn't the right time, even though the pressure that I had, uh, was, was, was high. Um, you know, and that's something that I think that we need to, we need to focus on is that if, even if our pressure is high, you know, what we need to do is we need to be, you know, we need to be like that kettle, like, you know, when a tea kettle has like all that pressure building up in it, but you know, it just like whistles, you know, it has that little hole that whistles out the steam. Um, and I'm not saying we need to make a lot of noise about it. I'm just saying we need to filter out all that pressure and our team should only get the steam that comes out of the whistle. Right. Because that's our job as business owners is to filter out the pressure and to delegate that pressure and to coordinate that pressure um, accordingly. You know, and I think, you know, it's important also, you know, to have good communication with your customers and, you know, kind of facilitate this stuff to the point where, like, you know, this stress doesn't happen often. You know, and for me, that rarely happens. Like, that was an off case, but you might be. A business owner that's kind of all over the place. Maybe you don't have your schedule lined up the way it should be, or maybe, you know, it's hard for you to communicate to your customers. You don't have the right system in place or whatever that is. So for you, you know, the pressure is amplified on a weekly basis. The pressure is amplified on a monthly basis. And instead of the pressure happening, like in the off chance that a hurricane comes, you know, your pressure that you're putting on your team is happening like weekly. And those, hey, I need you to work Saturday or, hey, I need you to work late uh, is coming up so frequently that, you know, what would have been a natural response of like, okay, you know, I I get it. The situation's calling for that. Um, I'll help you out on this one Um, is now becoming like I need to find another job because this business owner that I work for is overdoing it. Like the pressure never stops. There's never a calm period. And it's like I was there was a book that I read and it's the uh, it's about the uh, a shepherd's it's called a shepherd's look at the 23rd Psalm. And it's about, you know, a shepherd with sheep. And it's like, you know, I'm I'm not going to go not going to compare my people to sheep. I'm just saying like the shepherd's job, like the business owner's job is to keep the sheep calm so they can graze. And it's like for me in my business, like, you know, if I'm not careful, I can let my pressures get to them to the point where they're not calm and they're uneasy. And, you know, it starts with like, you know, Hey, we're really behind. We got to do this. And like, Hey, I need you guys to work Saturday. And Hey, I need you guys to do this. And it's like, you got to look at the big picture. Like I don't want to stress my team out at all, (laughs) you know, like ever, you know, I got to be consistent in my approach. And then when I do need help, I need to know that they're going to be there for me. Like, cause they're like, Hey, he doesn't really ask for help a lot. And if he does, I got to be there for him. So, I'm going to bridge into the next part of this. So Friday came around and I just put everyone that I could on this job that I need to get done. Because again, this guy's moving in. It was a little behind. It was team raised first, full interior, ceiling walls, trim doors, closets, crown, the whole nine. And I wanted to make sure it got done. Um, And the expectation was that it would be done uh, that Friday or, you know, I would have to make them work Saturday. And it didn't get done Friday. Um, Then I had a choice to make. You know, my choice was, do I make them work Saturday? Um, So I called the customer. I said, hey, you know, what's what's the move-in date here, man? What are we looking at? He's like, well, thankfully, I postponed, uh, you know, the movers a few more days out next week. So you don't have to worry about getting it done, uh, you know, by, by today, which was Friday. And I said, great. And then again, I had another choice to make. And I was like, could I make everyone work Saturday? And, you know, make up for one of the lost days on Wednesday and Thursday. That was another decision I had to make because we could have got it knocked out if we worked a whole day on Saturday. But like for me, I value family. And it's like for me as a business owner, literally the last thing in the world that I want to do is work Saturday like ever. Um, And I know my guys don't want to work Saturday, but I know that they would if I asked them to. So what I did was is I opted not to ask anyone to work on Saturday. 
even though that would have put us behind. Again, my goal was to look out for the best interest of my team, you know, just because I don't want anyone begrudgingly working. I don't want, you know, I just don't want that. And, you know, and also as a business owner, I don't want to know that people are working on Saturday. It puts me in work mode partially, you know, and it's like, I just want to chill too. So then you have Monday. Monday was the big day. Monday was the day that this job was supposed to be done. I sent another person with it. And it's just, you know, we've all been there where these jobs just drag just because of, you know, maybe we underestimated the workload or underestimated the team that we gave this job to. And it kind of just, you know, again, it kept going. Um, so for me, like, you know, it was like, all right, communicate with the homeowner. Hey, you know, the job's gonna be done, you know, today. And he's like, well, hey, I was there on Sunday. And, you know, there's no way you're going to get the job done today. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but you know, we're going to, we're going to hit it hard. He's like, well, I mean, there's just a lot that I saw. And like, I think he was right. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well, I think I'm overdoing it in terms of the promise here. Like, I just want to know that like, Hey, if you guys move in, you know, we're still, we might still have some stuff to do. I mean, it is what it is. You know, I don't want to rush through your job. Um, he was understanding. So Monday came and Monday went. All right. So at this time I'm going out there cause I really need to assess what's going on. And, uh, and I went out there and, you know, I talked to my my manager and I said, you know, hey, man, what we need to do is we need to be a little more organized. You know, I mean, this was a big job, you know, and you have to look at it from my perspective. We missed two days. I could have put you guys on here Saturday, you know, and I didn't want to do that. But what I what I do want out of you is I want you to have the big vision. You understand that there's pressure on on my end from the homeowner. And the only pressure you really have is from me. And I don't want to feel like I need to put pressure on you to get you to act. I just need you to know that there's pressure, right? So I need you to take ownership in this regard. You're the manager. You need to take ownership of this job. You need to understand that there's pressure and you need to motivate your team in a way to get them to work efficiently and organized. When I come to this job, there's paint cans over here. There's supplies over here. There's you know, there's just stuff everywhere. And it's like, you can't work in this environment like this. You know, you can't expect the quality result with just things all over the place. And I get it. You guys are working frantically. I said, calm down, you know, let's, let's reassess. So Tuesday came around and, uh, I went out to the job at around two o'clock and I went through, I blue taped everything. And I called a meeting with the team. I said, listen, guys, you know, this was the first job that I gave you that had this, level of detail. And I understand there, there was no shadow of a doubt that you guys are working hard. Okay. But there's a difference between, you know, walking on a treadmill and walking outside. Okay. Walking on a treadmill, we're not going anywhere, but we're working hard, working outside or walking outside. We're at least moving in some direction. Okay. And what we need to do, okay. Is we got, guys, we need to align our vision. We, we need to have a plan in place. Uh, but I, I also understand guys that this is a really far drive. We don't want to come back here and I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor. And I want everyone here to stay until it's finished. No matter what, okay? Not only do we need to finish the paint job, we need to put back all the shelving. We need to clean up all the countertops, all the bathrooms. These people are moving in. They don't want to move into a mess. Guys, we need to come together here. And everyone just looked at me and said, yeah, let's do it. We're in. You know, and and at that moment, I was like, man, I got a good team here, man. Like, you know, it's not like they weren't doing a good job. It was just taking a while, you know, but I'm like, guys, we, we're dragging here. Of course, there's another job. So I'm going to ask you guys to stay late today. And this is after, you know, again, just like a job that's already kicking their butts. I could tell they were tired, but, you know, they, they, they bought into that. And I think part of that was because like they know that, hey, I didn't make them work Thursday. I didn't ask them to work Saturday. But when I asked them, hey, listen, guys, now I really need you. It was like, we got you. OK, we got you. So um, last night uh, got the message. They did not leave that job until nine o'clock at night. And I never had anyone work that late in my business ever. Um, and am I proud of that? No, no, we definitely have some refinement to do. Um, and I think mostly because this job was so far and it's just like demotivating driving all the way out there again. Like they just came together and got it done. Um, and they sent me pictures. It looks amazing. Um, I know the customer's going to love it. They're moving in tomorrow. So when they show up there, the floors are clean, you know, all the things that he pointed out are done. I mean, it's just like, you know, at this stage in my business, even though I've been doing this for six years, we're still refining. We're never going to stop refining, especially when it comes to leadership, you know, and, and what I'm so proud of is like my manager, 
uh, took it on the chin, took the constru- constructive criticism, and you know we were able to produce a quality result without anyone getting flustered or frustrated. And even at the end of an exhausting job, they put in an extra five hours each uh, at the end of the day to get it done. Um, and that's what teamwork's about. But it's a give and take in business. It's a give and take from the leadership perspective and from the employee perspective. I think that the old way of doing business is that the leader is always taking because there's this expectation, well, I'm paying you. And because I'm paying you, you owe me. And I think that that might work in the short term, but in the long term, these employees are keeping score, you know, believe it or not. They understand that they're under your, you know, guise for a better lack of a better term, you know. So it's important, you know, be mindful. Remember that at one point you were that employee. And it's like, how would you respond to a demanding individual? And most of the time, the demand comes from a lack of organization, a lack of, you know, honestly, it could be poor management skills in terms of money. If the owner isn't managing money properly, then ultimately that's not the employee's responsibility. That's the owner's responsibility, but the owner has their own internal stress about that and they're putting that stress on their team. So you need to be mindful of how you manage all aspects of life because if you don't, then you're going to really kind of create stress that, you know, is manufactured through those things rather than stress that should only be job related. But if it's only job related, then, you know, that's, that's something that can be improved. But, you know, if it's not, then, you know, what, what are we improving? You, you know, you report with your money and cash flow management and you have this demand that you're putting on your team that they don't deserve. And it's like, that's kind of like how, how it needs to be. So, um, you know, what I wanted to kind of wrap this up about is like, you know, when you develop, develop leaders and the right leaders, the right leaders are ans- answer the call, you know, and it's like, I could have worked, I could have had them work on Thursday. I could have had them work on Saturday. Uh, but for me, you know, what was most important was, you know, being mindful of, of, of them in the position, uh, that they're in, but also like, Hey, when I did need that, that call to be answered, they were there for me. So we're good now. You know what I'm saying? Like they have my back. Um, my suggestion, if you don't have people that have your back, you got to find them and you got to let the ones that don't have your back go. Um, I know it's tough, but hey, you know, that's just what you signed up for when you started a business. So hope you got something out of this today. Um, good to chat with you guys again. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you got something out of this, um, you know, man, you know, be mindful of the workload, filter out the, uh, the pressure um, and, you know, provide a really good motivating culture uh, for leaders to grow within, learn from, reflect on. And, uh, and, and you'll be in a position where people love working for you. And I, I'm grateful to say that I think that's the case in my business. You'd have to ask them yourself, but uh, I think that's the case. And I'm grateful for that. So catch you later, guys. Thanks for listening to the Contractor Secrets Podcast.